release unto you some of my strength. God said, I will yield unto you some of my strength and power and ability that you may be able to yes. go forward. Be strong in the Lord and in the power. Be strong in the authority, in the power of his might. Be strong in the authority that comes with the name of Jesus. Be strong in the power that comes with Christ. God said, I'll let you use it. Be strong in the Lord and be strong in trusting in his power, the power of his might. Now you understand why it is written, lean not upon your own understanding, but put your faith in God. We walk by faith, and not by sight. And that's a reason why God is telling us to lean upon his power. God is a spirit. He was manifested in human form in the person of Christ Jesus. But God is a spirit. The world before us was spirit. Angels are spirits. Demons are spirits. The forces behind this world are spirits. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And God says, I'm not going to leave you helpless. I'm going to give you something. Read. Put on. He said, but you have to put on the whole armor of God. You need to exchange armor. You need to change your clothes. You need to put on battle garments. Military gives you the backpack, gives you the rifle, it gives you this, it gives you that. Karate, depending on what time, what, what, what style you take, teaches you your collars and gives you your weapons and this and that. But God said, listen, I got some armor for you. The armor of God. I got some armor for you that will help you walk as I walk. God says, put upon yourself the whole armor of God. When David was running from King Saul, he ran to the priest and tried to get some food and told a little story. The priest gave him food and he saw, if I'm correct, a weapon or something that had belonged to Goliath. And David looked at it. He said, I, I think I'll need that too because that was nothing like it. You need to ask God to open your eyes and take a look at the arm of God. And you will see that there's nothing like it. Put on the whole arm of God and there's a reason for it. That you may be able to stay. Uh-huh. Against the wilds of the devil. Because we fight spiritual forces. Spirits speak to our minds and try to move upon us. With the natural eye and in the flesh, we don't have the strength to withstand it. But when you put upon yourself that old armor of God, an armor that's prepared by God, an armor that has the attributes and the mannerisms of God, then you can be able to stand against all the wilds and tricks of the devil and every evil force. He's a God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for him. All power is in his hand. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He is called God Almighty. And now you have his armor upon you. To withstand against the wiles of the devil. Without it, you won't be able to stand. So when you're going through, I feel a virtue. When you're going through life and the tragedies and situations of life begin to pressure you and burden you down, you need to check your armor. Amen. Because the armor of God can help you withstand it. It can help you stand against the trials of life. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This is a, a straight statement. This is a, 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 a solid statement. What do you mean, Bishop? In other words, the devil's coming at you. Ain't no if and ands and maybe the signs. He's coming at you. I feel a virtue. I feel a virtue. 
The enemy is coming. If you don't know that by now. Amen. That you may be able to stand against because the enemy is against you. Amen. And he doesn't mind letting you know that. Amen. The scripture says that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Yes, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Amen. but against principalities. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Against it power. Didn't, it didn't stop there. But against. Just in case it didn't stop there some because it didn't want to set the impression that we're not in a wrestling match. Okay. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we're in a battle. Uh -huh. We are in a wrestling match. You ever seen wrestling? How the, uh, the two or the cage, whatever, everybody in it, they go at each other. Pull it, tuck it, throw it. In. Now they have the mixed, the mixed martial arts, if that's what you want to call it. The brawling and the hitting and the kneeing and the grappling. And it's a constant struggle. It's a constant struggle. So your life is like a wrestling match. You struggle upon decisions. You struggle with emotions. You struggle with internal problems. You struggle with the way you think. You struggle with the way you think of others. You struggle with the way others treat you. You struggle with your job. You struggle with your family. You struggle with your home. My God, you struggle with yourself. It's a constant pull. And then sometimes, and, and sometimes you struggle in your mind. You can be at home, or you can be around, like some of you are sitting here now, and we, uh, it, it, we would be appalled to know what some things, some of you right now are struggling with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In your mind. When you leave here, struggling with that which you brought here. We can't see it. Decisions you've got to make. Decisions you've already made. Things you're running from. Fear that's popping. Looking over your shoulder. My God, we wrestle people. Young and old, we wrestle. So you know this is true. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I don't see anybody grabbing anybody right now, but you're wrestling. I feel a virtue. I feel a strong virtue. You're fighting. You feel stuff pulling on you, and nobody got their hands on you. But you're wrestling. You can, you can feel the struggle. Every day. Some of you can feel it. Nobody's got their hands on you. But yet, you're wrestling. Come on. That's because we need the spiritual arm of God. We need the divine power of God upon our lives. You see, if God is such a good God, why this and why that? Well, he is a good God. That's why he gives you of his powers. We corrupted the world. He comes to fix it. We gave it over to the enemy, and now he gave us power to overpower the enemy. Yes. That we surrendered it authority to. When Adam and Eve sinned, they gave authority to Satan. God didn't create an ugly world. Everything he created was good, but he gave it to us. But if God's so good, why he let all this now? Let's just say if God was so good, why he created us? Because everything he created, he said it was, including man. That's right. You don't see God robbing anybody, molesting anybody, shooting Come anybody. On, you, don't, you don't see God doing that. You see us doing it. Yeah. And when he came in the, in, in, in the manifestation of Christ Jesus, they did it to him. But he overcame and overpowered it and gave power to men to stand against the evil influences behind the actions of people. For we wrestle not against 
This is why you don't see anybody holding anything. Because we wrestle not against what preacher? Flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Listen, I, I understand and tell you how devils work. Devils cause us to kill and hurt and fight each other. But demons ain't divided. <laughs> You think you're fighting your fellow man, and you are, so to speak, but the influence that's really causing it is a spirit. Listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, speaking of the church, but against what? Principality. Principality. Against, against power. Against power. Against rulers. The rulers. Of the darkness. Of the darkness. Of this world. Of this world. Against spiritual wickedness. What church? In high places. Those who love God, those who trust in God, those who walk after God, those who have the arm of God upon uh, The battles we fight are greater than the military, greater than the police, greater than the sheriff, greater than the GBI, greater than the CIA, because they, they, they look for the flesh. They catch one cartel leader, another one rises up. They catch one not mobster, another rises up. They catch one molester, another rises up. But we go to the source. The church, we wrestle against the demons and the spirits that cause these disturbances. And you never heard me say the devil ain't got no power. But we say he ain't got no power over me by the Holy Ghost. Because he's a creature of authority, but not greater than the power of God. And we wrestle against these principalities. The, 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 the devil has an organization that's set up over cities against powers and the rulers. Now you understand why we love not the world and the things of the world because the rulers of this world are in darkness. Against the rulers of the darkness. There are spirits that rule the dark principalities. There's a demon over Atlanta. There's a demon over St. Louis. There's a demon over Chicago. Why do you think in certain cities, they, certain cities are noted for certain types of sin? Because that's the kind of devil that's over that city. Yeah, that's right. Come on now. And the church, we wrestle against these spirits. Amen. Daniel was praying. And I believe it was also the book of Ezekiel. Talked about the prince of Persia over Daniel praying. And while he was praying, he said, The prince of Persia came to fight. And there was no such position in the region of Iran. Persia was Iran. He said, But Michael came and he helped me. Michael was one of the strongest angels in charge of God's people. What Daniel was saying was that he was praying. And the spirit over that country tried to hinder his prayer. But God sent help out of heaven, a stronger angel, to help Gabriel get through. And Michael fought with that demon. Even demons recognize authority. And the prayer was able to be answered. We wrestle people. Let's not cry about it. Let's not say what was me because trouble's going to come. The devil ain't going to make it easy for you. Life is full of ups and downs, but God gives us the authority and the power to deal with it. And as Christ suffered, own yourself likewise that everything is not going to be a bed of roses. But he will help you to endure, but you got to stand and not faint. We wrestle against these spiritual wickedness in high places. You ever say, man, I felt a strong spirit. Bitch, that spirit was strong. I'm pretty sure it was strong. But greater is he. Stronger is he, the Holy Spirit, that's in you. Now, therefore, he says in verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. After you've done this, stand. 
Therefore, he says, take upon yourself the whole arm of God. And if you do this, no matter what comes your way, you will be able to stand. No matter what comes your way, you'll be able to hold, hold your ground. You'll be able to stand if you put up on yourself the whole arm of God. And the arm of God covers the whole man. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore. Therefore you stand. Just don't stand any kind of way. Don't stand murmuring, complaining, I feel the virtue. Don't stand doubting and striking your fellow brother, your sister. Don't stand drunken and, 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 and giving in to beggarly elements. Don't stand with your head bowed down. But stand therefore. Read it, preacher. Having your loins. Having, the, having your belt for, for belt, let your loins be what? Girl, the Bible truth. Stand with truth. Just don't stand on anything or stand for anything. But stand on truth because truth won't let you down. And truth will set you free. Stand on truth. When you're standing on that which you know is hard to compromise. Because you know what you know. You know what you know. You ever been in that predicament before? Somebody thought you were lying, but you knew you were not lying. You just had to tell them, you can say what you want to say. But I know what I know. You stand on truth. Have your, your, your loins girded about with truth reading. And have it on the breastplate of righteousness. And let your heart be covered with righteousness. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sit against thee. That enemy may come in, but God has nothing but righteousness in me. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Your heart is righteous, so you can't penetrate it. The breastplate of righteousness. Protect your heart, people, with right thinking, right living, with righteousness. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And let for shoes, let your feet be shod with the gospel of preparation of peace. Let your feet lead you to peaceful pastures, still water. Let the gospel guide your footsteps. And they that keep their minds stay on Christ will keep them in perfect peace. Read it. Above all. And above all. Taking the shield of faith. Take up on yourself the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Some of the fiery darts. All. Some. The fiery, all, all the fiery darts of the wicked. Seen and unseen. That shield of faith can fight it all. Without faith, it is impossible to I feel the virtue. My God, Lord, rebuke the spirit of fear. Get some faith about yourself. Oh, you've been hiding and running all your life, making excuses why you don't want to stand all your life. Come to grips with yourself. Amen. Change your clothes and put upon yourself the whole arm of God. And stop making excuses for not doing and not being. That's right. You know, as a kid, we used to come up and, and I used to hate to be put out front to do things and everybody was trying to do this and trying to do that and I just haphazardly do it. And I said, I don't want to do it, no way. But I really did want to do it. But my inferiority he didn't let me try. But when everybody left, I tried it and I said, I can do it. Next time everybody came around, I was there. Then that's the way some of us would be like, oh, it don't matter. But it does matter. Yeah, and you know it do. Oh, I can put up with it. You don't want to put up with it, and you know you don't. Oh, it doesn't matter, but you know it does. Get some strength about yourself. Change your coat and put up on the whole arm of God and live with the purpose. You don't have to take everything life brings you. Amen. Because something's going, you don't have to call yourself a failure. If you fall, you don't have to stay out. Live with the purpose. Oh, I'm just living. You don't have to just live. You can live with direction. It's all right to hope. It's all right to dream. It is all right to want to be. You just gotta put on the right clothes that can help you get that. I feel the virtue in the right way. And keep. Holy Ghost said, keep your eyes off of everybody else. That's right. Somebody can be going forever, went forth to do something, and you looked at somebody's facial expression, and you thought they were looking at you, and you 
Now they have Jesus. They ain't having no word in mind. But you thought they were looking at you. What's wrong? You all right? No, I'm fine. Are you sure you're all right? I'm fine with that look on your face. It ain't got nothing to do with you. We walk by faith, not by sight. Take upon yourself that shield. It can quench and stop all the fiery dot. I don't care what the enemy brings, that shield of faith can do it. That's right. The shield of faith, I feel a virtue, can keep you standing steadfast. You see, faith, that shield of faith, a shield, it keeps things from hitting you. Wrong thought, put that shield up. Someone has done you wrong. Stones have been thrown. Deception. Now you can feel it. You see it there, but it's not penetrating. It's not penetrating to the point where it moves you. Because you got that shield of faith up. That devil came to go with everything. He is coming and going. Go fell down to the ground. And he hit the ground. But when they looked at him, he hit the shield of faith over his head. What do you want to say? No. God give it and the Lord take it away. That can be the name of the Lord. The shield of faith was over him. That can be the name of the Lord. And in all of his pain, he never lost his integrity. He kept that shield of faith. Abraham waited for Isaac to be born. Promise him. And then God came and said, listen, I want you to sacrifice your only begotten son. The son of you and Samuel, promise him. Sacrifice him. Abraham said, Isaac, he's a young one. I've come. We're going to make an offering to the Lord. Isaac said, Dad, I see the wood. And there's the altar. But where is the sacrifice? Abraham thought was pumped because he know God didn't play. He know God didn't play. I got to sacrifice my only son, me a seven of promise son. Dad, where is the sacrifice? Abraham had that shield of faith telling him what kind of God is this? You waited all this time. He said it was a promise, so now he wants you to get rid of it. He had that shield of faith. He said, God will provide. Amen. And when he tied that boy up and put him on the altar, picked up that knife and the word of God said, Abraham, don't. Now, that's where you get this expression, there's a ram in the bush. He said, look over there, Abraham, that's a ram. That's a sacrifice. Abraham, that was always a sacrifice. He said, I just wanted to see where your heart was. Was your shield up? Now I know. God will lead you to a certain point. And then he'll say, now I know. That's nothing you won't do for me. Now I know. That's still a place of stepping up to you. You didn't get up in the city. But God can say, now I know. And the Bible said it was written down that Abraham was called the friend of God. So that seal of faith will block everything. And the Bible says, by faith, by faith, Abraham went to offer up Isaac because he believed that if he had a sacrifice that boy, God would have raised him up. Now the Spanish, the Spanish church like to say it like this. They say it's not so much better in Spanish. The Spanish brothers say in the Spanish language, it says by faith, Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac and burn him to ashes because he believed that God could raise him up from the ashes yeah. and make him whole again. Yeah. Hallelujah! I come up with my wife and I'm coming back down. He called his wife and everybody who said, we are coming back. You got to speak we. Amen. Before you get back, say we are coming back.
my God, they came back. I took them behind. They came back. Abraham, his son, they came back with more faith. God is not unjust. He's giving you what it takes to fight anything that comes against you in your life. You just got to put it on. He's giving you. And he says freely, put upon yourself the whole arm of God. Take my arm. And then he said, listen. I, I was working with my son-in-law. He's a master of many things. And we were hammering. And then the doc brought up his big old hammer. Ain't never seen one thing. Bam! The other one flew. Because it had more weight to it, right? Bam! So now when I want to get something done in the hair, I get that big old hammer. Bam! It makes me look good. But it's the weight of the hammer. And all God is trying to do is you, bam, bam. God is saying, here, give me that hammer. He said, take mine. Bam! Yeah. Get behind me, say it. Bam! Get out! Bam! Be open to Bam! God said, take your mind over. You'll get the job done faster and better in the way of all. God said, give me that hammer and take mine. In the name of Jesus.
And then he says, verse 17. And it. take the helmet, the helmet of salvation. Put upon your head the mind of Christ. The helmet of salvation. So then when temptation comes, the devil tries to get you to give up and let go. Salvation, no name for salvation and deliverance. The devil comes to hit you. You got the helmet of salvation. All them rocks and things hit your head. But you got no bone on your head. The, the, the spirit and the helmet of salvation. Something hits you, knocks you down. If a righteous man falls seven times, I get out. Some congregation, the help of salvation helps you to think, cast all your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. That devil says, no matter what I hit them with, they come out thinking deliverance. No matter what I hit them with, they come out thinking faith. Why? Because they got up on their head to help of salvation. I, 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 I know this sounds funny. No, no, no. We're all kids at heart, so please don't take me wrong. Okay? The young folks understand you know, they got this group of folk called the X-Men. <laughs> I kind of got interested in the X-Men for a long time ago when I was walking by. And I saw the guy in the wheelchair, the girl, who had the mind. It did something to me, you see. Because we do similar things, but mine by the Holy Ghost, you see. I said, this is interesting. And I just started following them. They weren't gods and nothing like that. They're just people with supernatural good things. And but then there was this one guy that kind of went bad called Magneto. He can move things with iron man, right? But the professor who had the power of the mind could talk to him through the mind. And Magneto didn't like that because he wanted to be bad, so he put a helmet on. And that helmet, I can't reach him. He got his helmet on. And that's why God said, put on your helmet. Young people don't understand what I'm saying? The devil can't reach you. <laughs> Put on your helmet. You ain't like needle, but you're holding no feet. Put on your helmet. And the devil can't reach you. The helmet of salvation. Why don't you give up and let go? But the helmet says, my soul has no pleasure in them that turn back. Put your hand to the power and don't look back. Hallelujah. The helmet of salvation says, bring that in me. They got their helmet on. You ain't finna reach them. Huh? You're not finna reach them. But you can't get to his mind. Got the helmet on. No matter which way you turn, it's gonna come out salvation. Now, the enemy is stepping back as we close. He seen the armor right. You got the truth. Your feet got the gospel of peace. Your mind is protected by salvation and deliverance. The devil sees all these things were made to protect them. Now some of the demons are stepping back. Because now that soldier got a weapon that can strike. And the devil is saying that everything we don't put on these folk didn't work. But no matter what they wear on. So now the devil is moving back from this thing because of read it. And the sword. And take up the sword of the yes. Spirit. My God, of the which Holy Ghost. Is which is the Word of God. That Word of God is sharper yes. than a two edged sword. Yes. Take up on the sword yes. of the Holy Ghost. That Word of God. Yes. And the devil came to Jesus. And the God said, If you be the Son of Man, the will to turn this bread into stone. And Jesus took up a sword and said, Get behind me, Satan. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And then he came again and took him on top of the, of the, of the temple. You be the Son of Man. 
jump and he took up the sword and said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Then he took him again and showed him all the riches of the world. If you be the son of God, I'll give you everything. If you bow down and worship me, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. And the devil left all cut up, all bruised up. Because the word can cut through anything the devil can offer. The word, amen, the sword of the word, which is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. There's no weapon against God's word. And in his word, he says, listen, there's no weapon against God's word. God can destroy everything. And yet the word says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Because greater is he, greater is he who received the honor of the I am the Lamb, the first and the last, the King of kings, the Lamb. Take my arm over here. Feeling pretty good, huh? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm ready for battle. We have an enemy. But we have power. Yes. I just want to encourage you. You know what I'm telling you? She, she, she. Shake, shake, shake. I'm gonna say, don't feel free. 